suppose that um, people decided alcohol was bad. No more booze, no more beer, no more wine. And, you know, it's illegal now. So, of course, people are going to say, well, I'm going to get some somehow anyway. And you got to find out. You know, in the old days, you couldn't go on the Internet and find out, you know, how do you make some stuff like that? So they had to go talk to people that knew. And there were people that knew how to make booze. And, like, if you just take a bunch of cherries, put them in a wooden barrel, and leave them outside, they'll sit there and ferment. And they'll bubble and bubble and bubble and, and smell all nasty and everything. If you put a plastic sheet over it, it'll ferment and make this cherry wine. And cherry wine is maybe 10% alcohol. But suppose you want it really powerful. So you can just take one drink and be drunk as a dog and fall off a cliff and stuff. You know, it takes expertise to turn your cherry wine into some cherry really powerful drink. And today we're going to teach you how to do that. Yay! I mean, everybody's got to learn how to do that. It's also important that if you live on an island and there's no fresh water, you're surrounded by billions of gallons of salt water and you're dying of thirst. There must be something you could do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or if you live in a city in the medieval ages and they didn't have toothbrushes or toothpaste. And a lot of people had rotten teeth in their mouth. And they'd come and say, hi! <laughs> and you'd first throw up and fall over and die. <laughs> so how can you make perfume? You know, the same thing you're going to learn today is the way that they used to make perfume. So when the person comes, before he gets there, you got a water balloon full of perfume, and you just go, whack! And then they smell good, maybe, by the time they get there. In order to do that, you need to know something about water first. In our first class, we heated up water in a paper cup. And the temperature went up and 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 up. And then it hit a certain point and didn't go up any further. And that certain point was 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And they call this flat spot here the boiling point. And that's for water. Well, if you mix something else, or say you just used alcohol, alcohol goes up and 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 up, and then it stops and hits a boiling point, but it's a different spot. I think it's somewhere near 75 degrees C or somewhere around there. Different spot. Well, now, what if you mixed alcohol and water and tried to boil that? Would it boil at the high point, the low point, or somewhere in the middle? Say, we don't know. Depends if you mix it 50-50. Ah, what if you mix it 50-50? But be, be like 87 and a half. Yeah. Might be. If you want to try to Yeah. What if you poured in salt? Salt water, would that go up to this spot? Would it go higher? It would go higher. Higher? Lower? Lower? Lower. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll find out that too. Maybe. We'll see. But first, we need a crazy story. Uh, let's see. Once upon a time, evil Mr. Fred's minions built him a castle out of crummy old rocks. And it's got like the chimney thing going. And they almost finished the top. It was kind of crude. They didn't get the spiral staircase in. And the top was kind of a wall there. So even Mr. Fred had to climb a step ladder inside to get on top. Anyway, they didn't put those on. So even Mr. Fred can walk around the top more easily. And there he is. And there's a big doorway here. And his minions are supposed to be finishing the castle. But they weren't. They were busy playing around with other stuff. And they discovered a big black 
pit of sticky stuff. Yeah, tar. And they jumped in it, of course. So now you got really sticky minions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, sticky minions. And even Mr. Fred saw them coming back and he says, No, you don't. You're not getting near me. You guys are all covered with tar. Go take a bath. So they put a big black tub in the castle. And they lit a fire under it to warm it up. And they jumped in. <laughs> and the tar got hot and, well, kind of warm. And the minions like this. So now they're in there and they're having tar fights in the tub. Well, when you heat up tar, it makes smoke too. So now the smoke is going up here, like this, and getting in Evil Mr. Fred's eyes, and he's choking and gasping and everything because he hates all that smoke all around him. But the cold rocks make some of the volatile chemicals in the tar come out, and it starts dripping. And Evil Mr. Fred jumped down the outside, kudoomph, and he looked at all this drippy stuff. He said, huh, I wonder what that is. Of course, he lit a match to it, and it went, boom, and the whole outside of his castle caught on fire. And he said, whoa, I thought so. That stuff's gasoline. That's great stuff. He likes gasoline. And he says, I could use that. And he had one of the, this is a long time ago, one of the very first cars. You know, it was a, a horse carriage with this crummy little engine on it. And in those days, they didn't even use steering wheels. They just used a stick, like a joystick. So there's a stick sticking out of it. And to fuel them, it was easy. You just parked it by the saloon, went inside, ordered some booze, poured the booze in the tank, and it could run on the alcohol from the booze. And even Mr. Fred had the minions boil up more of this tar without minions in it and create more gasoline, and he put that in there, and the car ran a lot better with the gasoline. He says, whoa, this is perfect. I've invented gasoline. And the minion said, but we found it. Evil Mr. Fred said, no, you're too dumb to find anything. So now the minions had to mine the tar, put it in the big pots, boil it up, and collect the gasoline, and Evil Mr. Fred was gonna sell it all over the place, and people were gonna buy it and run their cars. Problem was, his gasoline cost more than booze. And he thought, oh, now what am I going to do? So he said, oh. And he decided that he would send his minions out to rob a bank. Whenever you have a problem, just rob a bank. No, not, not really. And he, the minions came back with these big white bags with S's on the front. And somebody had crossed out the S's big white bags with S's on the front, crossed out. And evil Mr. Fred said, whoa, what did you do? And Minion said, went into the bank, big bags, said hi, bye, took them away. And they're so short, the guards didn't know what they were. And now evil Mr. Fred has about $40 million. <laughs> Says now what to do, what to do? That's not enough. We gotta do something. And at the time in the country, people were all worried because people were drinking too much booze, getting into their cars, crashing into each other, and dying. Which wasn't too bad, but the worst part was they'd crash into each other and not die. And that cost a lot of money. So, evil Mr. Fred said, oh, I got an idea. And he found a group of ladies that were against people drinking booze. And he said, here, have four million dollars, go play. And so they bought axes. <laughs> And then they went from bar to bar, and they smashed all the bars, and they broke down the tables and the chairs, and they chopped open all the barrels of booze and let it fall out on the floor. And they still had money left over. Well, what are you going to do? So they went to the Capitol, you know, Washington, D.C., with their axes. And they said, now you're going to pass a law to make booze illegal. And everybody said, okay. And so they made booze illegal. And the ladies went off saying, woohoo, no more booze. Well, now they have nothing to run their cars with, right? 
Yeah, no booze. So evil Mr. Fred could sell his gasoline at a high price and make much more money. So now he's got $40 billion. And he's saying, now we're talking. This is almost more than jump change. I could do something with this. Well, Jack and Joe heard about this. And they said, uh-oh, evil Mr. Fred is now rich and powerful. We got a problem. And Jack said, yeah, but we have to be good. We can't do to him what he's doing to us. We've got to stop him from making all his gasoline and using his money to influence the entire world. And they said, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? And they didn't know what to do. Should they let evil Mr. Fred continue making more and more and more money? Or should they try to stop him? Good question. The minions, in the meantime, were busy playing with the tar. <laughs> and being minions, they got the tar all over them. They discovered a whole field of corn growing out there. Corn. Yeah. So they picked all the corn. They got the ears of corn. Big ears of corn. Those are ears. And when evil Mr. Fred wasn't looking, they jumped up and down on the ears and turned it into gush. And they had lots and lots of gush that they had in an old swimming pool. There. And then they just left it there because that's what minions do and it started to ferment and produce alcohol. So they had an entire swimming pool full of corn alcohol. And they th said, wow, what should we do with that? Well, Jack and Jill discovered their corn alcohol. And they said, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. Now Jack and Jill have two problems, a swimming pool full of corn alcohol and evil Mr. Fred with way too much money and power. If you're Jack and Jill, what would you do? Yes. Call the government. They made alcohol illegally. Arrest them. There you go. Yes. Go to random acts of stupidity, Bill. <laughs> Have everyone jump into the pit of tar so we all get stuck together and then they all just then throw even Mr. Fred at football and all everyone in stupid acts of bravery thing plays yeah. Bill are all football players so they all tackle even Mr. Fred. <laughs> and they're covered with tar. Exactly. So they become one ginormous tar ball. Yeah. Yeah. And they take the castle with them, of course. Sure. Light the corn oil, uh, the corn um, alcohol on fire. Aha! Uh -huh. Light the corn alcohol on fire. Yes. Convince the ladies with the axe to go to the government and tell them to make the gasoline illegal. There you go. <laughs> Why, they could do that, couldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Go to the Agni store of everything and order a fireball and light the corn alcohol on fire and burn up evil Mr. Fred except for uh, half of his mustache. There you go. Cool. Yes. I would uh, t tell the ladies with the axes that evil Mr. Fred was making alcohol and have them attack his castle and then give all the money back to the bank. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because that would make him angry. Yeah. All right. Let's see, we'll leave this uh, to, let's see, to. Uh, 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 it's right ways around, see? Did somebody skip spelling class again? No, it's spelled correctly. See? Yeah, it's in a giant circle. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Well, we're going to do the experiment next door. Uh, there is a chance that something might explode, as usual. So you're going to need some eye protection. You can wear goggles or the glasses. We have here some flasks that look like cones. So they call them conical flasks. When I was in college, they didn't call them conical flasks because anybody could look at it and say, oh, that's a conical flask. So they called them Erlenmeyer flasks. I think they look the same as this. And they're handy because you can put liquid in there and boil it. And as it tries to boil up, it cools off just enough so it comes back in. It doesn't overflow like it does with a lot of things. But just in case, they have these things that look like iron-loaded sand. They call them boiling beads, and you put a pinch of those in there. You don't need very many. 
and they act like a place for the boiling to start. Have you ever thrown a Mentos in Coca-Cola? Yeah. yeah. It's the same concept that, you know, the Mentos provide a place for the carbon dioxide to come out of the Coke, and these guys will start the process of the boiling so it doesn't just go gablort. And what we're going to put in there is four things. We're going to put in a one cup of water, which is about 200 milliliters. So you're going to fill it up to the first line with water. And then we're going to put in one scoop. There's some scoops like this scattered about here and there. We'll put in one scoop of rubbing alcohol. And it's called isopropyl alcohol. And you don't want to drink this kind. It says on the container, causes severe gastric distress. That means it gives you a stomach ache. <laughs> you might throw up. So you're going to put in, you're going to fill this up to the top and try to pour it in into the water. So remember, the first line is water, scoop of alcohol. And then we're going to put in some food coloring. Put in one squirt of food color. Then, of course, in any experiment, it should smell good, right? So we have some pure peppermint extract. You can put in a squirt of peppermint extract. And then you're going to put in some salt. And there's a spoon here. I would put in like maybe five scoops of salt. See how much that looks like. We'll do it without the water just so we can see if it looks like enough. Oh, yeah. If you fill them up good, it's going to not end up, I always got bad grades in chemistry because my chemicals were all over the floor. I had the best lab coat though. My lab coat had all these colors on it from the chemicals and holes through it. It probably would get a lot of money if I had kept it. Yeah, so they put in about five scoops of salt. So you got the boiling chips, the salt, the peppermint flavor, the food coloring, and the water and the alcohol. How many things is that? A lot. <laughs> Quite a few. Once you have all that stuff in there, you'll set it on the hot plate and put a cork in the top. And the cork has a thermometer built in. So I'm not going to set it up there now because it doesn't have the water. But you'll position this so it can rest there without the hose trying to tip it over. And then eventually it's going to boil. And it's going to create vapors. And the vapors are going to go through the tube into this copper. There. there, through the copper. And then they're going to come out the bottom of the copper tubing. And you're going to want them to drip into that clear cup. You're going to be able to read the thermometer while it's doing its stuff. And you'll see the temperature go up and up and up and up and up and up. And it'll get to a point when it just starts to boil. Now remember, it's got alcohol in there, and it's got salt in there, and it's got food coloring, and it's got some water. smelly stuff. Water. We just want to record, or, or just try to remember where it starts to, to sizzle and boil and stuff. And the temperature is going to keep going up and up and up and up. When the temperature gets to about 95, then you want to take it off the fire and save whatever's in this cup. Uh, when it first starts, it's going to drip real fast because the tubing is kind of cool and it condenses in there and drips fast. As the tubing gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, steam just starts coming out and you're getting no drips. So you have the handy dandy cooling method, which involves taking a paper towel, getting it all wet, and draping it over the top or dabbing it or burning yourself, whatever. Yeah, you could just stuck it like that. And you can take a squeezy bulb thing and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze water on it to try and cool it so you get more condensate. When we're done, we want to know what came out. Will the blue food coloring come out? Will the peppermint flavor smell come out? Will the alcohol come out? We don't know. That's why we do things. So you're going to need a partner. The first thing you're going to do is take one of these ice cream buckets Fill it about half full of water at the horse trough and bring it back. So pick a partner 
We can work in groups of two or three. What's that? One cup of water. One cup of water or up to the 200 milliliter line. Wave water. And then there's a squeezy bulb. Um, how much vinegar? Uh, this stuff is alcohol. Uh, yes, one, right. one scoop of that. Is this one ours? One scoop of this. Four teaspoons of stuff. Does it matter how much food colors? No. Okay. Until it looks good in blue. This is the alcohol. Pour it all over the floor. Oh, you great. Just one of those. Yeah, just one of those. Yeah, then water up to the 200 line. This is alcohol. Have you got it yet? Yep, perfect. Have you got alcohol yet? Let's mix it. Yeah, it's good for you. It's rubbing alcohol. Yep. So if you got the salt, you got the boiling beads, you got the alcohol. Uh, you got the smelly peppermint stuff. No, you could if you want, but. How much this One pinch worth. No, I was going to it. When you have all the ingredients in the flask, turn your heater up to full blast. Then you, you turn it on, turn it on high if it's not already on high, so it can get started. Yeah. And turn it on high. Yeah, 300 is as high as that one goes. Go. That's starting to bubble and boil. When it starts to boil, turn it way down to like two or three. Yeah, you're going to need to put a paper towel on there. As soon as yours is starts to boil, check the temperature. What temperature is yours? 80. Okay. Ooh, now you're starting to get some alcohol or something. Yeah, don't leave your setup because you're going to have to continually put water on the paper towel. And after, it, after it's boiling, turn it down to medium. Oh, now you're just starting to go. What temperature is yours right now? Turn that guy down to about halfway down and see. If it stops boiling, turn it back up again. Then keep watching the thermometer. When it gets up to 95, turn it off. Okay, it got up to 95. All right. Then they just let it simmer for a while. And every once in a while, kind of smell what's in the clear cup and see if it smells like that uh, pepperminty stuff or if it just smells like alcohol. Just think in the old days when you were making booze, you had to make a gallon and it's dripping. And then the police were always looking for you. And you didn't want to shut it down until you had the whole gallon, but it's only going drip, drip, drip. <laughs> you got about one more minute of brewing time, and then we're going to take the clear cups into the other room. Yeah, you can turn it off. So you just go. Do we have enough? Oh, oh, fine. See, I told you. Yeah, you got enough. <laughs> okay, unplug your hot plates and take your clear cup into the other room. So what you've done is distill a mixture and you've taken out the stuff that volatilizes faster than the rest. Volatilizes means it turns into a gas. Smell yours and see if it smells like, do you have any pepperminty smell in there along with? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs>
<laughs> Take a small step. Well, in the old days when you were when you were moonshining out in the woods, trying not to get caught by the police, uh, they had to decide whether it was alcoholy enough. What are you going to do? You know, you don't have sophisticated equipment. So what they would do is take a, a tin pan and put some gunpowder in it. Because, oh you know, if you're a redneck, you think hammers and gunpowder. So you got a pile of gunpowder in there. And then you pour some of your booze on top of the gunpowder till it's just level with the top of the pile. Then you light the alcohol on fire. Now, if it's pure alcohol, it burns down till it reaches the gunpowder. Then the gunpowder gets warmer and it evaporates off, evaporates off, evaporates off, and then it goes poof. Yeah. And they say, oh, that was a good mix because it had enough alcohol to dry out the gunpowder and make it go poof. If yours wasn't fully distilled and has still too much water in it, the water would make the gunpowder too wet and it wouldn't ignite. So they, I think that's where the term proof came from. What it really was was poof. <laughs> so we're not going to use gunpowder today because it stinks up the whole room. It smells like sulfur. But what we can do is use just a bucket of water and a pan. They do this in restaurants, by the way. If you ever get Cherry's Jubilee or something flambe, this is what they do. So here's a, a cup of stuff. And we want to see if it burns. And we'll turn the lights out because it's better. Okay. And we'll put the stuff in the tin pan. It's like a measuring cup. It is a measuring cup. Yeah, and then we'll first just try to light it at the top. Um, you can see that it, it burned. So this was good quality booze. If there was gunpowder in there, we could be pretty sure that it would go off. If you're at a restaurant and they're doing the Cherry's Jubilee, you know, the guy brings out the dessert and he's got alcohol on it and he ignites it. If I was you, I would stand up and move back a step. Because sometimes they aren't trained that well in how to do the whole Cherry's Jubilee. You notice it's burning more now. The cup's mm -hmm. getting hot. It's evaporating faster. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Bravo, bravo. Oh. 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 So. Encore, encore. So theirs worked. They they turned it off at the right time, so they had mostly alcohol in there. No. Okay. So. Yes. Well, yeah. This one ignites. In our first class on on Tuesday, they uh, they had quite a few that didn't ignite. And we can. The chefs in the restaurants will often warm the pan. That way, they can use a lower concentration of alcohol. To get it to go, we can pour it out this way. Oh, that's so cool. That is so awesome. It's still burning. Got a burning pot. Bravo, bravo. So beautiful. Thank you for lighting the camera. Yeah, that one worked. To be continued. Well, we have the ingredients here for a fiasco. We got tar. We got alcohol. Uh, we don't have gunpowder. Aww. Aww. <laughs> and we have minions that aren't real bright. And Jack and Jill are debating about how to stop evil Mr. Fred. And they realize that if they try to use force against evil Mr. Fred, they would probably end up being just as bad as him. So they have to figure out some way to make him destroy himself. <laughs> this is cool. You know, so he's out there selling gasoline, making tons of money. And they go over to evil Mr. Fred and they say, Ah, oh, evil Mr. Fred, you're the great and the powerful. And he says, yes, <laughs> I know. 
and they said, why don't you expand into a greater business? Your minions over there have an entire swimming pool full of alcoholic corn stuff. You could do the same thing with that and sell booze. He says, now you're talking. Gee, I see you've turned to the dark side. And Jack and Jill said, well, no, not really. But evil Mr. Fred said, yeah, I'm gonna go into the alcohol business. And he thinks, gee, I wonder if I can use the same stuff to turn this into more concentrated alcohol. So he said, minions, go get some alcohol, and bring it over here and pour it into the pot. So the minions go over there and it's been fermenting away and it's been evaporating away like your distilling thing. So it's getting more and more concentrated just sitting there in the bathtub. And they take a whole bunch of it over and pour it right into the pot. Well, it does like pouring that into that bucket, <laughs> except this is flammable stuff in the pot. And now the entire castle starts to shoot flames out the top like a jet engine. A flame geyser. Yeah, a flame geyser, and it makes a really loud sound. My brother's chimney did this once. He lived in Boulder Creek, and they call it a flu fire. You keep burning and burning, and it builds up creosote on the inside, and then the creosote catches on fire, and it roars with this really loud sound. And so now the blue flames are shooting out the top. This thing is roaring. It's being fed by all the stuff that's in that pot. Even Mr. Fred is that far from it. And the heat is so intense, even Mr. Fred just goes poof. And all you see is a little skeleton up there dancing around going, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, that hurts a lot. And one little piece of mustache got thrown out of the flames and slowly drifted to the ground. And they all lived happily ever after, except evil Mr. Fred. Dun, dun, dun.